Haggai in chapter number 2. Haggai in chapter number 2. <clears throat> when you find your place, let's stand up. Yes, even you at home. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Hey, we can honor the Lord as we stand to read his word. Haggai chapter number 2, beginning of verse number 1. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying... Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, said the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Look again at verse number 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? I want to preach on this thought today. Coronavirus, the vision test. Coronavirus, the vision test. Father, we love you. Pray that you would bless our preaching and, and reading of your word today. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, amen and amen. And you can be seated. <clears throat> 2020, 2020 vision, the year of vision. Did anybody remember we had a theme this year? Theme this year, talking about vision. Going to have a vision for missions. Going to have a vision for the church. Going to have a vision for this and that. Man, we had the whole year lined out. How's your vision? Coronavirus tests our vision. You know, uh, I hate having an eye test. I'll go up there to the driver's license place. When it's time to get your renewal, I had to redo that last, last year. And Man, I went up here to get my driver's license. I don't mind. I don't. We could do a driving test. We could do a written test. We do all that. You know what makes me more nervous than anything? When they say, lean, lean in there and, and, and read the third line. My eyes start watering before I even get there. I, I mean, they're watering. I, I'm practically crying. And ain't nobody even singing. Beulah, lay. They ain't even singing. And I start crying. And I, I look down through there and I'm like, come on, come on. You're 2020 on a squint. Squint. You got this. You got this. How many worst I ever had? We were taking my son Nathan down there, and the ladies, the ladies like, read the read the fourth line. He goes, there aren't four lines. <laughs> she said, boy, you'll find that fourth line, or you can just go home. And I was like, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Look, there's five lines, son. The fourth one. He's like. I can't see it. I can't see them. And he's in a panic, you know. It's like, he's a kid. He's trying to get his driver's license, get his learner's permit. Talking about fourth line. There ain't no fourth line. I was like, boy, there's a fourth line. You better. It's like, it's like a hunting scope. Go in a little further. Back out a little bit. Do something. You know, you're like, start right. He's over there rocking. They're like, you don't get a driver's license. Or, no. No. <laughs> Just, just find the fourth line, man. Why is that test make you so crazy? I, am I the only one that gets nervous during that time? I'm like, they ain't going to let me drive, you know. And, or, or I'm diabetic, so I'm supposed to go every year or two and have my eyes checked. I hate that. And they're like, here, we're going to drop this stuff in there. It's going to make your eyes do things that you know not of. And you get all these, you know, these things. And Oh, man. And, I, you know, and I'm trying to make light of everything, and I'm just nervous. I'm afraid they're going to tell me i got to have, you know, because I don't see good at night. So I, 
I don't drive at night usually, you know, if it works out that way. If not, I just find a car that I think is going the same way I'm going and stick behind them pretty close, you know. And so, but I don't want to have to wear glasses. And, and, uh, and so you go and I'm, I'm always trying to make humor. You know, I'm like, I think I have x-ray vision now, you know, and I, I think I'm fine. I can see everything. I, you know, you start seeing dust particles in the air. And, you know, it's just, you see all this stuff. And I hate having that eye test. And then they're like, you know, which way is it going? What letter? Read the eighth row. This one or this one? This one or this one? This one or this? And then this girl comes up, and, and she's a doctor. I mean, doctor, like doctor, not an assistant, not the lady at the front desk, doctor. And she looks like she needs a note from her mom to be there that day. She's so young. How is it that I'm not aging, but... The doctors are getting younger and younger. And so this doctor, she comes up and she's like looking in my eyes. And she's, I was like, what, 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 are, you, what, what are you doing? Because she's like way up in my personal space. She knows nothing of social distancing. She's undoubtedly out of work today because she's like right here in my face. And she's got this thing and this bright light. She's like, keep your eye open. Keep your eye open. Look, and she's looking inside there and she's looking for damage from diabetes. And she's, and you know, and I'm just nervous, so I'm always trying to be funny when I'm nervous. And she goes, no damage. Your eyes are absolutely beautiful. And I was like, my wife will claw your eyes out. <laughs> <You're not> just, <laughs> she had to stop the test because she was laughing so hard. <laughs> but, you know, eye test. Testing your vision. Vision's important. Where there is no vision, the people perish. God said, how many of you saw this house in its first glory, and how do you see it now? Is it like nothing? Our problem is sometimes everything's better in the past. Well, I've known some of y'all long enough. Y'all was complaining back then too. Y'all been complaining for 20 years. Don't act like back in the... Now, I was about to say back in the 80s. The 80s are not 20 years ago. The 80s are 40 years ago. Ain't that something? So now, you know, I'm like, yeah, 20 years ago, that was the 80s. No, that was Y2K. 20 and a half years ago. Can you believe that? And so, when you think about that, but, you know, we used to, me, I think, the 80s, the best. The best music, people were more godly, the economy was something, Reaganomics, the Cold War. I don't know about y'all, they had that movie, The Day After, made for TV. I didn't go to the theaters, we couldn't afford to go to the theaters. Hey, praise the Lord, they put that on TV for us to enjoy. The day after. Who remembers that? Yeah. I see y'all at home. I see those hands. Uh, the day, talk about the day after. Everybody's going on about their life. And all of a sudden people look over and rockets are going up. And the whole world gets nuked. Nuclear war happened. And people are all like, burned and weird looking, look like almost like aliens. They, they ran on the stores and probably bought all the toilet paper and milk. Bread, it's not coronavirus. The day after. Nuclear war, let's buy the toilet paper. Lung disease, toilet paper. Make a run. What a weird placebo that having a stockpile of toilet paper is your vision of wealth. It's your measure of wealth and security. Like, people are like, how are you doing? They're not like, I'm doing good. I was able to talk to my mama the other day. They're like, I'm doing good. I got like 40 rolls of Scott at home. I loaded up in the basket. I'm good. Somebody's like, how are you doing? How are your kids doing? They're like, I'm doing good. I was running low. My kids brought two rolls by. You know, it's like, what are you doing? You know, we are weird people, man. Can I tell you that our kids will grow up and they'll look back and this will be their good old days. This will be their good old days. Growing up in the 80s, the Cold War. The Russians were coming to get us. Rocky hadn't saved us yet. The 
They came in that one movie with the teenagers. Wolverines! Red Dawn. Somebody, he's three months older than me. He gets it. Where? Red Dawn. The Russians are coming. They're going to kill us all and put us in camps. The bombs are going to blow up. Rocky's going to lose. And then Rocky, Rocky changed it. The two greatest speeches of the 80s. President Reagan. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And the second greatest speech. And if I can change, and you can change, Adrian, <laughs> then maybe we all can change. You know, and Rocky. We're just weird people, man. How's your vision? Hey, a bunch of us are kind of miserable right now. Our kids are going to grow up, and they're going, it was simpler times back then. <laughs> we was good. We was, they're like, oh, did you grow up poor? No, we was rich. We had, like, cases, toilet paper, and everything. The whole world ran out. <laughs> this is, this is going to be our kids' good old days. It's because of the way we look at things, guys. So let me ask you. As a result of coronavirus, how's your vision? How did you see the world six months ago? And how do you see it now? How, how do you see your priorities today? Your priorities. Have your priorities changed at all? Working, not working. Some people are like, I'm bored. That makes me want to thunder punch somebody, but I promised the preacher I wouldn't do that no more. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I'm talking about I'm bored. This has done nothing but accelerate our workload. We've had stuff going on in our personal life, stuff going on with church, the daycare, ministry this, missionaries, all these things. It has done nothing but increase our workload and increase our stress level. But I'm good. I already said I wanted to die tired. How do you see your priorities now? Let me ask you this. How do you see your liberty now? I, I'm, not telling, I'm not talking about the liberty that's written on a piece of paper that Congress declared. Don't nobody else care about it, so I ain't going to care about it for a minute. That's not the liberty I'm talking about. And I thank God for the liberties that are afforded in our country. I'm glad our country... Our founding fathers and a few folks still today recognize our right to worship together, to free speech and all that, freedom to assemble, that they're not going to make any laws about the free exercise thereof. The, the, you know, Thomas Jefferson didn't go, um, all this is nothing if somebody gets sick. If there's a virus, we're throwing this piece of paper away. He didn't say that. And so, how do you see liberty? But let me ask you this. How do you see your Christian liberty? I was telling some folks in our prayer meeting, we, we, I was going to be here preaching today whether y'all came or not. Regardless, hey, Monday, I was real glad our governor, what he said. But I was going to be here preaching anyway, and the doors were going to be open anyway. And I don't mind spreading the chairs out because I don't want anybody in our congregation to get sick. But I got news for you. If I have to live, die, or be lonely, I'm going to exercise my Christian liberty. Now, I believe we can do that with compassion and, and be safe. I believe we can do that with common sense. I believe we can listen to medical professionals and be wise. But I ain't fitting to give up my liberty for safety. And I'm not looking for permission. I already have a permission note. We have our Declaration of Independence. We have our Bill of Rights. It's already in writing. Listen, we have our freedom. And even if I lived in communist China, I would still preach until it was time to die. Because that's what we have to do. As long as, hey, right now it's easy. Right now it's a cushy job. 
But there could be coming a day. Hopefully through all of this, you can see how quickly our liberties can be stripped. You can see how quickly you will do what you're told. You talk big. We all talk big. But what's going to happen when, when somebody starts coming and knocking on the door? We've had preacher friends where the police have literally blocked their, their parking lot. Now, I didn't think it was wise to meet when they did. I didn't think it was a good idea to meet when, when they did. We didn't have a good understanding of what was happening with this corona thing. And I ain't riding no rona coaster if I don't have to. I'm not looking to, to make that a part of my life. and I don't have time for all that. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get a cold. I don't know about y'all, but uh, we had toilet paper at the house before this was over. We went crazy and washed our hands before this thing got started. We already cleaned our house. I don't know where the cleaning supplies are now. What are you slobs been doing? We cleaned our house before. We washed our hands before. We took a shower every day before. We, we used common sense before. We covered our cough and covered our sneeze before. That the reason that they're asking people to wear masks is, is because people are slobs and they, they, they sneeze and cough and they don't cover it. So you get to suck on some carbon dioxide because we live in a stupid society. Get lightheaded. Just think a dumb person. But in light of the coronavirus right now, how do you see your Christian liberty? I promise there are those that would like to infringe upon it. There are people today all over social media hating on churches just like ours. We are going to be the source of the outbreak. Second wave, it's all those filthy Christians' fault. Nothing about Walmart. Nothing about Lowe's. Those, we should just go to Lowe's and meet in the garden aisle. Meet in the garden section. Nobody's nervous at Lowe's. No, but we could meet. Hey, you like air conditioning? We go meet in the frozen food aisle at Walmart. No outbreak there. No outrage there. Hey, just get it in your mind and your heart, honey. This world hates Jesus, and they hate you because they hate Jesus. Go read the book of John. Jesus explained it to you real good. They ain't hate you. They just they're hating on you because they hate they hate me. That's what it's about. Hey, how's your vision on your finances? Oh, Dave Ramsey seemed like a moron when he said, you need to have three to six months of your uh, living expenses saved up. You're like, that ain't realistic. We'll never need that. There are people right now wanting to shut you down for the next six months where you can't go to work. And by the way, if you shut down another week, there ain't going to be a work to go back to. So all these things are happening. Well, here's what I've noticed. A whole bunch of the stay-homers, they, and I'm not mad at them, but they're looking after their situation, and they have checks coming in. All the stay-homers, they've got paychecks, or government checks, or Social Security, SSI. They've got all this other stuff. They're doing fine, so they can yell stay home. How are you going to tell me that, that people can go all over Walmart, but they can't go down to the lake and go fishing by themselves? You can live in an apartment complex, crowded up with people all around, but you can't go to the state park and go camping. This ain't about no coronavirus. Not all of it. What's your vision about your finances? Some people are going to have some biblical sense and realize that maybe they ought to become givers and, uh, and maybe God would bless their finances. Some people are so worldly, they're going to think, oh, I've got to save every penny, and they're not going to give and still expect God to bless their finances. What's your, what's your thought on your health? What's your thought on your health? Has it changed your vision on your health? I mean, who's, who's most vulnerable? Elderly people, they can't do anything about that. Diabetics. 
Some people can't do anything about that. But you better be taking care of yourself. Don't talk about, I was in somebody's house one time. I wasn't even nice to them about it. They went who I was there to see. I was there to see their grandma. But I was like, what are you doing here in the middle of the day? He said, I can't work. I said, why can't you work? You look healthy to me. Over here living off your grandmama. I'm just nosy like that. He said, I can't work. I'm diabetic. I said, is that sweet tea you're chugging down the second glass of since I've been here? He goes, so what? I said, hey, dude, here's so what. I'm diabetic. At the time, I was, I'm 435 pounds, diabetic. And I work all day, every day. Are you kidding me right now? I work 60, 70 hours a week. Get out there and work, dude. Hey, drink you something. Put some stevia in there or something. You don't need all that. And, and you know what? He, he drank sweet tea and beer until he died. Sweet tea and beer until he died. God can't use us no more if we're dead. We need to take care of ourselves. And listen, that's coming from a fat diabetic. We need to take care of ourselves. I can't drink, I love sweet tea. I love regular Coca-Cola. I'm pretty sure I read a verse about Coca-Cola being served at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I just can't find it again. I've been looking. It's got to be nectar from heaven. Coca-Cola is so good. And you know, you know the Lord ain't going to use no high fructose corn syrup. He's going to use that good sugar in there like they do down in Mexico. Man, but I can't drink that stuff. It'll kill me. And I can't serve God if I'm dead. Now I'll go on to the house, but I'm persuaded I have work to do. How's your vision concerning your health? You taking care of yourself? The Bible talks a lot about it. Listen, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't wreck it. Don't mess up what God gave you. Some of us are already jacked up. Don't, hey, don't, don't mess it up any worse than it already is. Be healthy. Be wise. Serve the Lord. How's your vision on prayer? How's your vision on prayer right now? I've been amazed at how faithful our people have been to Zoom prayer meetings. We have way more people gathering together in their home inconveniently right at 7 o'clock every night. Way more people than ever huddle up in those little separate prayer groups. It's been a blessing. How's your vision on prayer? How's your vision on prayer? Somebody said, I can't figure it out. No, you just click on that button and it just goes there. And we show up and people are getting there. You know what they're doing? People that are on lockdown at the house, they get there. My father-in-law is one of those. He gets there 15, 20 minutes early every night. Just Everybody gets there, hey, how y'all doing? And he just talks their ear off until, until we jump in and tell them it's time to pray. And, and people are fellowshipping on there. It's just being good. How, how's, your, how's your vision on church? I don't know about you. Our church family congregating together just seems a little more important to me than it even did before. And it was vitally important then. I missed you guys so bad. I'm so thankful for uh, Zoom so we can at least see each other's faces and I can watch you laugh and, and talk. And Man, what a blessing. It's been a hallelujah. But there's nothing, nothing, like even though half of y'all look like bank robbers right now, still, <laughs> it's a blessing to see your faces in person and for us to congregate together, for me to get a sense of what you're feeling, what you're thinking. You don't have to be muted, although that is a blessing. There have been times in my ministerial career that I want to be like, boop, and just, can I mute that one over there, you know? <laughs> Online, I can do that. I'm like, oh, I'm the host of this thing. Mute! <laughs> but how's your vision on church? Listen, this is, we're not allowed to go and put anything on anybody's doors right now. It's, it's, it's against the law. You can't take a piece of paper. That's why the Chinese food place hadn't come by, and, and Domino's Pizza hadn't come by and put, put a coupon on your door in a long time. No coupons. 
They have a different, they have a temporary law right now. You cannot put paper stuff on doors. We can't, we can't go out and, and just even leave gospel tracts. You'd think we could just sneak by and leave gospel tracts and be done. What we'd like to do is, hey, if the coronavirus got you today and you died, are you 100% sure? Man, what a timely message. Are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? If you rode the Rona coaster and it ended bad, went off the tracks, would you? Are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? We can't do that. But you know, we've got folks that are going online and witnessing online, using wackadoo, random, it's just, you don't know who's behind a door, you don't know who's going to pop up on these things, and, and they're witnessing. And they're witnessing. Most people slam the door, click, go away. But some people are listening. It's just like real life. But you can do it at home. Guys, if we're going to evangelize the world, we're going to have to have a vision for evangelism, some no matter what evangelism. Maybe instead of complaining about neighbors and neighbors turning in neighbors, and you'll have some neighbors going, don't come outside, you're a slap in the face to the medical profession. And then the others are going, if you turned in your neighbor, you did the right thing. You know, and, and it's pretty rough stuff, man. There's some hostility out there, and it ain't all passive-aggressive. Some of it's just aggressive. You've done the right thing, you know. It's, it's tough. But how about instead of us complaining, why don't we just post a Bible verse? Why don't we just brag on what the Lord's doing? Why don't we brag on somebody that, you know, Brother Coates, uh, yesterday after we talked to his dad, Brother Coates is just bragging online about how his dad was, they had the oxygen up to 11, and then it went down to eight and then five and he's down to a three and he's planning to go home tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Couldn't we use some good news? Not the, don't you dare open your business. Don't you dare starve me out. You know, and listen, you say, you think the world's after us? I don't know. I try not to be too much of a conspiracy theorist, but I am so good at it. And hey, if they really are out to get you, is it still paranoia? But I don't want to spend my life complaining about what the world does. I want to spend my life bragging on what Jesus does. Hey. Jesus saves. Hey. Jesus saves. Friend, I can't read your mind, and I don't know what's in your heart. But it could be that maybe through all of this, you've, you've had some really unexplainable fear and maybe faced with the potential of getting a, a, a coronavirus, getting this COVID-19, and you just thought, man, if I die, I'm, I don't know what would happen. I don't know what. Well, I'll just tell you. If you died and you don't know what would happen and you're not sure you'd go to heaven, let me, let me put you at ease this morning. You're not going to heaven. The Bible says that in Christ, we can have the peace that passes all understanding. While the rest of the world is freaking out, we can have peace. Somebody's like, I'll kill you. I'm like, don't you threaten me with heaven. Amen. My wife, she's like, I'll do something mean to her. And she's like, 3 a.m., 3 a.m. She knows I'm totally vulnerable at 3 a.m. <laughs> I, I don't care. I'm like, if there's a tornado coming to our neighborhood, it better go next door because I'm out at 3 a.m. I'm... I'm just vulnerable. She can do whatever she wants to, and I'm, I'm a victim, y'all. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I feel fine. If I die in the next few weeks, it wasn't the coronavirus, okay? <laughs> She's been in lockdown too long. Uh, hey, but I'm not scared. I'm not scared of dying. I don't like pain, but pain's part of life, but I'm not afraid of dying because I am saved by grace through faith in Jesus yeah. Christ. Saved to the uttermost, I know that I am. Washed in the blood of the precious Lamb. Hey, I'm saved to the uttermost. I know I'm going to heaven. Do you have that? Do you have that assurance? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Whoa, purchased of God. 
Mm. Man, it's just good to be saved. Do you have that? You ought to thank God for it. Hey, if you don't have that peace, won't you come? If you're listening at home, won't you call us? We'd love to go through the Bible and show you how you could have that peace that passes all understanding. We could show you how to be saved. You say, what do I have to do? No, that's work salvation. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you let me introduce you to the Savior? I'd love to. I don't have a lot of opinions on it. I, I do. I, that's not what I want to share with you. I like to share the Bible, what God said. Black, white, and blood red. If you don't know for sure that you're saved, please come and let us show you how to be saved. And if you are saved, how's your vision? In light of the last six, eight weeks, how's your vision? Have you lost your vision? You need to catch the vision. Yeah. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless the, the challenge that we have just to have a vision. When something big happens, when something hurtful happens, like it happened there in the book of Haggai. People had a different vision. They, they just thought about the good old days and the good old days, and they were helpless and hopeless about the future. Lord, I pray that you would burden our hearts, that if we will be faithful and we will serve you and we'll do what you want us to do, the best days are right here before us. Help us, Lord, to be effective witnesses, faithful Christians, and true to your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving.